What is a microcell? How does it work? How do you set one up? And do they actually work? I'll answer all those questions and more in this video. I'll also do a comparison between microcells and cell phone signal boosters so you can make the best choice for your situation and get better cell phone signal in your home. Microcells, often called uh, femtocells or network extenders, it's all the same thing. Microcells are available for every major carrier. However, they are carrier specific. What that means is the Verizon one will only work for Verizon customers and the AT&T one will only work for AT&T customers. A microcell creates an area of cell signal in your home. It broadcasts that signal as well as takes the incoming signal from your phone and sends that out, allowing you to place calls or send texts if you have no cell service in your home. It does this using your internet connection. Instead of your phone connecting to a cell tower, a microcell acts as a mini cell tower. The microcell captures the cell signal from your phone, converts it, and then sends that converted signal over the internet to a gateway, which then disperses that signal out. Some microcells work for 4G signal while others only do 3G. Consider your needs when choosing one. So why would you need a microcell? Well, if you live in an area with poor cell coverage or no cell coverage at all, that's where a microcell comes in. It will create that area of cell coverage in your home and allow you to communicate. Even if you live in an area with cell coverage, buildings can often block the cell signal from coming into your house. Your own building's walls, as well as if a tall building or some sort of structure is between you and the cell tower, will block the cell signal from coming in. If you've ever been on a call and walked into a building and you drop the call or it starts breaking up, then that's exactly what happened. So I've got two microcells here, one from Verizon and one from AT&T. These are both 3G models. They come in 3G or 4G. So you can choose which one is gonna work best for you. So let's set one up and see how it works. We use the Verizon one for our example. So typically with a microcell or a network extender, you'll get these pieces. You get the microcell itself, a power supply, cable to connect it to the internet, and then a extension cable for the GPS antenna. On this particular uh, model, if you open up this little tab here, you'll find your GPS antenna. It looks like this. So you can use this extension cable, connect the antenna on one end, and then connect it to the microcell and then put this in a window. This is for if you can't put the actual microcell in a window, you can run this out to the window, the, the antenna itself, and connect it or place it by the window and then have the microcell elsewhere. So now we'll put this back together. You don't have to use the extension cable. You can put the whole unit right in the window if you would prefer. So now we'll just connect it all up. So we'll connect our network cable here. Connect to the network cable. And then connect this to the router. If you're using a wireless router, make sure you keep the two units at least two feet apart. All right, let's plug it in and let it boot up. You've got four lights here. You've got your power, your system, GPS antenna, and then your network. So if any of the lights are blue, that's good. It means everything's working properly. If they are purple, that means they failed. Or if any of them are red, they'll blink at different speeds. That means that there's an abnormal problem. So it appears right now these two have failed, and this one is not connecting to the network. So we'll do some troubleshooting and figure out what's going on there. All right, the microcell is all set up and it's working. So let's do some tests on the phone to see how it's actually performing. Before I do though, I wanted to give you some troubleshooting tips that I learned when doing this installation. First off, give it plenty of time. In the manual, it says it can take up to an hour to connect to the satellites. So make sure you give it lots of time. I found that it took about 30 minutes before ours would actually work. So 
it would br blink all kinds of different light patterns, red, uh, purple. Um, that's, that's my second tip is don't really pay attention to the lights. Put it in the location in the window, make sure everything is connected, plug it in and then leave it for an hour. It was, it was frustrating figuring out what was going on because it kept blinking red lights, but finally I just left it. And after about 30 minutes to 45 minutes, it, uh, all the lights turned blue and it, it worked. Tip number three is if you're installing a 3G microcell like we are, it's only going to boost your 3G. But what you might not know is that your phone usually will show the 4G signal. So it might be showing a really bad signal and when you call it won't actually be using the microcell. So you're going to have to turn 4G off if you're using just a 3G model and I'll show you how to do that right here. You want to go to cellular data options and then turn off your LTE and then what you'll see is it will change over and now it's showing the 3G signal. So we've got our phone in test mode. You can see right now it's got a negative 82 dB. Um, this is a more accurate way of reading your cell signal instead of the bars. If you want to know more or want to know how to put your phone into test mode, check out this video. Basically, so you know, a negative 82, that's kind of somewhere in the middle, maybe like two bars. So we'll go plug our micro cell in and see how it performs. So you can see now it's jumped up to negative 73, which is pretty good. So there are the results. You can see that the microcell works and that it provides signal in the house. So what are my thoughts after doing an installation of one of these? I thought it was pretty easy to install once I worked through all of the troubleshooting stuff. Um, so hopefully that saves you a lot of time and frustration when setting up yours. Uh, I spent probably two or three hours figuring stuff out and messing with cables and differentiating the length between them and all kinds of stuff only to find out that it was just a matter of time. The lights blink red, which in the manual it tells you that means that something is wrong, but uh, you just leave it for 45 minutes and it works. So yeah, that was the big one. <laughs> Aside from that, um, it works well. It provides a, a pretty decent coverage area. Um, it didn't cover my whole house, so it'll cover uh, my living room, kitchen, and uh, a bedroom. But anything beyond that, it doesn't work for. So if you want to build out an area larger than its, its coverage range, you can build out uh, multiple units in the house. So that's the one way you can cover your whole house. You'll just have to get multiple micro cells. So what other options are out there? That's where the signal booster comes in. I wanted to cover both so that you can see which option might work best for you. In some cases, maybe a microcell is gonna work best, and in others, a cell signal booster. So the main difference between the two is how they function. The microcell works by using the internet. So you'll need an internet connection at your location when you install one of these. A cell signal booster doesn't require internet. How it works is it takes weak signal, boosts it, and then sends that boosted and strong signal throughout the house. And then does the same thing in reverse out to the cell tower. So you won't need an internet connection there, but you will need a very faint hint of signal. It can't work off of nothing. Let's talk about coverage. A microcell will broadcast about 40 feet from the base station, or about 5,000 square feet. A signal booster will cover anywhere from 1,500 to about 7,500 square feet based on the model that you choose. A microcell is very easy to set up. You just plug it in and let it do its thing basically. That is if you know the troubleshooting tips like I mentioned earlier. It can be pretty frustrating trying to troubleshoot and figure it out, but once you know those things, it comes out pretty easily. A cell phone booster ranges from easy install to complex based on your booster. So you'll want to choose one of those based on your skill set and the tools you have and, and how comfortable you are doing those type of installations. What about users? A microcell can have a limit. Uh, usually it's about four people can use it simultaneously. You can use more in standby mode, but a lot of times it's, it's got a capacity issue. Cell phone boosters don't have any capacity issues. Uh, you can use as many people as there are within the boosted range as need to be. 
Microcells, like I mentioned earlier, are carrier specific. So if you've got a Verizon microcell and your buddy comes over on AT&T, then it's not gonna work for him. A signal booster is not carrier specific, so it will work for any carrier and anybody within its boosted range. So Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, or any of the other carriers, it will work for them. And those are the main differences between these two technologies. I wanted to lay them both out so you can see which one might work best for you. So take these into consideration and uh, let me know if you have any thoughts or questions. And also please subscribe to our channel. Uh, we release videos like this every week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.